students and lifelong learners. Uh, today, the session that I'm going to hold, I'm going to entitle the MariaDB and MySQL Bootcamp. So my goal is to share with you some of the uh, core commands that you're going to need to be successful when working on the command line in MariaDB. So let me share my screen and we'll uh, point to the fact that if you are rusty with database concepts, specifically with SQL, I'm going to point you to uh, W3Schools or Tutorials Point. You should be able to Google either one of those and uh, then drill down to SQL and you'll find some good material there. But I am going to start right off on my Ubuntu server that happens to be running in a uh, Oracle virtual box hypervisor. And I already have MariaDB installed. So to engage MariaDB, I will use the command MySQL because MySQL really is the underlying product that uh, is running. Let's not have too many spaces in there. And I'm gonna have the user root and I do wanna launch it with the password. Now the password is something that was established at installation. So my password and your password may not be the same. So if you are not the one who actually installed MariaDB, then you'll have to consult your database administrator for the password. So we see that we are at the command line in MariaDB. In the parentheses, we see the word none, meaning that no particular database has been uh, specified at this time. So one of the first things that would be uh, useful for us, especially if this happens to be an environment maybe that we're not uh, completely familiar with, is a command called show databases. Remember that all MySQL and MariaDB commands end with the terminator semicolon. So the MariaDB server does not recognize that a command is complete until it sees that semicolon. So I am now seeing the results of show databases and I learned that there's a database name information under bar schema, one named MySQL, one named performance under bar schema, and one named WikiDB. If you happen to be one of my students in Linux admin class, you'll recognize WikiDB as a database that was installed as part of the LAMP and Media Wiki project. But still, we have no particular database uh, enabled or activated. So at this time, I'm going to use a command called use, and I am going to use MySQL. Let's just for grins and giggles, we're not going to put the semicolon there. 
and hey, I just made a liar out of myself. The database system accepted that command and changed the database to MySQL. So apparently there are some commands that are recognized without the semicolon. It is best practice though, to end all your uh, MariaDB commands with the semicolon. Now that we have actually specified a database to be the active and current database, we can explore further. So what might we like to find out about a particular database? Well, as you know from other courses, databases are typically a collection of tables. So there is a command show tables that will tell us all of the tables that make up this particular MySQL database. And there is quite a list of them. They look very, you know, technical, very uh, application oriented. And it is true, it's all the underlying architectural tables that describe the MySQL underlying framework. But perhaps uh, if we were charged with doing some investigation uh, about MySQL, we may want to take a look at well, one of these tables uh, and Perhaps that might be the hmm, user table, the last one there on the list. Sure, why not? So there is a command called describe, which will show us what we call the schema or design of a table. Wow, so there are lots of fields in the user table. Many, many descriptive fields. Well, three of those fields, if we go back and sort of look at the table, we can see that there is a field called host and there's a field user, and there is indeed a password field. So I am going to use a standard select statement from uh, the SQL suite of commands and go ahead and look at host user and password from this table called user. And we have some interesting information. We can see that the only host is local host. So our current machine, we've got two users, the root user and mw-admin. Again, that has to do with the media wiki. And whoa, we've got password information. Looks like a uh, encrypted password, uh, but nonetheless, not information that we would want any random user to be see seeing. So uh, maybe I will press the point right here that these are good reasons to have strong passwords on any commercial or organizational system for which the outside world could or would access. 
the um, kinds of uh, breaches like SQL injection attacks are targeted toward these kind of tables with sensitive information. So that's just an aside, uh, but to give you some information about the kind of things that can be on your server. Let's actually create our own database. So I am going to use the command create database. And I am going to name that database NOS 220 happens to be the name, the uh, course designation for a Linux admin course. So I have now created that database. I got the nice friendly message. The query was okay. One row affected. And I can guess that now if I say show databases again, that now there is indeed this new database in the list. Let us use this database. You will see that the MySQL that is in the brackets will change to NOS220. So now we are in a new database environment inside of MariaDB. We can uh, create things. So let's create a table. So that it, command is create table. And now would probably be a decent time to take a look at a little quick reference card that I have created. So we can recall, I used a show databases command. I used a use and a database name to make a database active, I showed tables within a database and used the describe command to look at the schema design of a specific table. So now I've just created a database called NOS220, and I want to create a table. So of course, the keywords are create table, then a table name, and then inside of parentheses, I have a comma separated list of column names, and data types. And for this uh, quick boot camp, we'll only consider uh, a few of the really popular data types. So this table that I'm gonna create is gonna be called students, and then it has to be a paren. And so let's have a field called student ID. And we will have that be a character field that's defined as a length of seven. And I said it was a comma separated list. So we will put a comma and a space and name. And there is a data type called variable character that is typically used for flowing text. We'll make the name up to 40 characters in length. How about email the same thing? And 
and um, we'll end up with birth date. You can see that I'm wrapping around and I'm not very concerned about that. And I'm going to have that be a built in data type of date. Now I'm going to end with the semicolon and enter. We see that the query is okay. Zero rows were affected, which is uh, as expected because we have not yet created any data. We only created a structure for uh, our, our database. So let's show tables. And we can see that in our NOS 220 database, there is a single table. That table is named students. We can again use that describe keyword to describe the table. And it should be what we expect, what we just created four fields and the data types are exactly as we specified. So we created a database. We've created a table in that database. Let us put in some data. So we're going to insert into the students and you see in that case i've hit the enter key i did not use a semicolon and maria db has recognized that this is an incomplete command and we see the little dash greater than sign like an arrow which is awaiting more input. So now I'm going to continue the command with values. Now, there are two ways that we insert, and we'll go back and look at the reference. We insert into table name, and we can actually specify a list of column names and then the keyword values and a list of values. But you notice that if we are going to add values for all the columns in the table, then we can use this alternate form which is what I am doing. I am not spelling out all the columns because I am going to add values for all the columns. And I am going to make sure that the order of the values that I specify match exactly the order in the table. So the first value is going to be a student number that is of length seven. And since it is a character value, I am going to enclose it in the quotation marks. The name I will see if I can just type it in and have it be recognized as that variable character. And we're going to just throw, sort of show three different ways that we can put in data. So the email address, and this is not a real person, I've just made it up. And we'll just use the format for my school. 
And the last field is date. Now, the standard date format, you can enter as a character in year, month, and day inside of these single quotes. And Maria DB, MySQL will accept that and store it in the actual database table in the native date format. Okay, what did we do wrong? We have a problem. So I am going to use the up arrow on my keyboard where I can bring back that command. We're going to assume that this name, Bob Smith, was improperly recognized because it lacked quotes around the name. So we are going to try again. And this time the query was OK. One row affected, as we do expect. And well, how do we check? Well, we can go back and use that select. And we can either select some field names. How about student ID and name from the table named students? And we can see that there is one row returned, and it is the student ID and name that we expected to see. You'll remember from any database class you took that you can use the star or asterisk as the wild card. So we could select star from students to find every field and every record in the table. And again, we see what we expect to see. So let's go back to our quick reference guide and know how to start MariaDB with the MySQL space dash U space root space dash P. We're going to be prompted for a password. We enter the password that was established when MariaDB was installed. If we want to do some database discovery or investigation, we can use show databases. We can use show tables. And then after we know some things about a table, we can set one of them as active using the use table name command. Of course, we first have to set a database as active using the use database name command. And then if we want to know a little bit about a specific table, meaning the schema design of that table, we can use describe and then table name. Often we need to create data. If we are a database administrator, we can use the create database and then a name to make a new database. And then we can create a table and insert data into that table. Of course, there are many other commands and extensions to commands. There is a lot that you can do with SQL. So again, I highly recommend that you look at either W3Schools or Tutorial Point to take a look. Here is an example of Tutorials Point and the SQL tutorial with all kinds of good things about selecting, creating, and 
dropping tables, inserting data, updating queries, etc. So really the only way to sharpen your skills is to use practice, experiment, and I highly recommend that you spend as much time as you possibly can, work on it, and you'll get better and better.